First of all, I would like to thank everyone that did participate in the uh, spelling bee. Um, it first was bingo. First, first, I mean the first thing. Sorry, sorry, sorry. First thing, I forget what what <laughs> I'm doing. It was a great success for those that didn't make the chamber meeting. It was uh, we raised twenty eight thousand eight ninety, and um, after expenses, it ended up being close to seventeen thousand. So I appreciate everyone's help and um, support. Okay, so today our guest speaker is Lee Brown. He brought the Susan, uh, Miss, the beautiful Miss Susan Daniels with him as a guest. Um, we didn't introduce her, but that was my fault. So um, Lee Brown, he is the director at Community Health Corps. Um, he um, contracts and manages management, has 40 years of experience working for organizations that support persons with um, intellectual um, disabilities. He has a master's degree in special education and a bachelor's degree in psychology. He has worked for Community Health Corps for the last 20 years. Mr. Brown's role at Community Health Corps includes local planning in which he works with others in nine county catch, catchment area facilitating public input and responding to needs um, Mr. Brown is also the project director of East Texas ADRC since inception in 2008. He has successfully supported this local uh, collaboration of eight partner organizations to assist older persons and individuals with disabilities in 14 county regions. And Mr. Brown has also served at a state level on the Ark of Texas and is currently appointed member of Texas State Aging and Disability Advisory Board. He is also, and this he said was his favorite part, is a proud father of four children and five grandchildren. Hmm. With no further ado, Mr. Lee Brown. So, I have five grandchildren, and one of them, Alice, a little child, she's now three and a half years old. Um, Alice is a special needs child. She, they identified very early in the process um, that she had hydrocephaly. And so, it's just a condition where you know, the fluid in the brain builds up, it's pressure, and of course, there's a lot of damage but they couldn't deliver her until she got so far through her <clears throat> gestation. But um, Alice is with us, alive and well, and just one of, one of my joys. And I really love getting on the floor with Alice and laying down and having Alice, you know, to crawl over to me, curl up, and, and playing together. And so, um, again, it's really great to have all my grandkids, and I love all my grandkids, but I have a special place in my heart for Alice. The reason why I bring up Alice today is that um, I represent Community Health Corps. And if Alice had been born 50 years earlier, um, Alice would probably be going to a state supported living center. She would not, we didn't have the resources and services there in the community. Um, and so to get the level of support that she needs, the physical therapy, the occupational therapy, all of the different gate trainings, et cetera, the speech therapy, um, all of those things you would find primarily back 50 years ago, say in a state supported living center or some other type. Now, there, not to say that there weren't individuals in the community helping to provide that support, and many families chose to provide that support there in their home without a lot of federal or state support, and maybe that's the better way to say it. The federal and state support that existed existed at institutions maybe 50 years um, previously. But in the 1960s, some great legislation occurred both at the national level and also at the federal level. Well, the federal level, national level, and also at the state level. And through the Health and Safety Act, um, centers like Community Health Board were created to help provide services and supports to persons with mental health needs as well as persons with intellectual and development uh, disability needs. And we also have expanded that um, our executive director, Mr. White, always is challenging us and making sure that we're reaching 
um, populations and providing uh, as many services as we're able to provide. So, um, and I do want to say just briefly, there's nothing wrong with state hospitals or state supported living centers or state schools. Um, but having the ability to be able to provide <coughs> services supports to most of those persons in the community is certainly a better, um, I guess, a better value both for the individual and for the families. And uh, again, we're very proud of our tradition being a part of that. I should also say at this point that Community Health Corps is one of 39 community centers uh, known as Community MHR centers that uh, cover the state of Texas. And so we actually serve nine counties. Um, and let me tell you how we got there. And so let me just say there are three dates that I want you to remember. 1970, 1979, and 2006. So 1970 is important because that's when Greg Harrison MHMR Center began. Uh, it started serving individuals with behavioral health needs, mental health needs, um, and persons with intellectual disabilities um, in Gregg and Harrison County, which was great for those counties, but didn't help some of the other surrounding areas. So the next year was, anybody remember what the next year was? 79. 79, that is when we expanded, and in 1979, we began providing services to Upshur County, as well as services to Marion, Panola, and um, uh, Rusk. So, again, that was important, and at that point, we took on a new name, which you may, some of you may be familiar with, called Sabine Valley Center, or Sabine Valley Regional <coughs> MHR Center. So the last day I asked you to remember was 2006, and in 2006, we affiliated with three, or three counties up to the north, and we became, uh, to, re to reflect that expansion, um, we became, or we added the counties of Bowie, Cass, and Red River. Um, we became known as Community Health Corps. And so Community Health Corps, Sabine Valley Regional, same organization, just our territory has expanded. And actually, we have many other contracts, uh, both with the state and other providers, and we serve, we have some programs that extend as far as 32 counties. But our primary counties are those nine counties that I mentioned. And you should have at your table um, a little flyer brochure, and it shows the, the um, nine counties that we have. All right. So over the years, our mission has remained the same, though our name has changed. And that's helping people achieve dignity, independence, and their dreams. And the people we help include many types of persons. Uh, we help provide services to persons who have a serious mental health diagnosis, <laughs> individuals with intellectual disabilities, persons with a substance use disorder, infants age birth up to their third birthday who have a significant delay, youth who are at risk um, of losing their placement at home um, or in school, veterans, persons in the criminal justice system, as well as older adults. And so we're able to provide a wide range of services, again, based upon the funding source that helps support us to be able to provide those services. So how many people, you may ask, did we actually serve, say, last year in the year 2017? Well, if you look at um, the number of individuals, not actual services, but individuals that we touch. And it could have been a touch for one day, or it could have been a touch all 365 days. But, but separate individuals, <coughs> we provided services to 12,285 individuals. Yeah. You know, that's not a bad size uh, East Texas town. So again, it was 12,285. Um, we also provided about 277,000 hours of direct service. <coughs> We had um, 5,400, I'm sorry, 5,242 crisis screenings, which is one of our primary roles, and I'll talk more about that in just a moment. And then of those screenings, over 1,500 of those individuals needed some type of residential treatment or setting to help stabilize their condition. 
So this usually is a length of time either three to six days. So as you can see, we're, we provide a lot of services throughout our service area or catchment area. Um, I talked about um, crisis services, and one of our primary roles is um, providing crisis services. So it's for persons who are at risk of hurting themselves or hurting someone else. And so there is a, we have a, operate a 24 hour, seven day a week crisis hotline. And so again, using that same brochure, that crisis hotline is posted at the very bottom. And it's 1-800-832-1009. And again, it is a free service. It comes as a part of our role um, within these nine counties that we serve. Um, and as you can see, if you remember, we did over 5,000 crisis screenings just in 2017 alone. And, and one of the things that, uh, again, it, it's for designed for people who are just going through a really difficult time and the stress has gotten to where they may either hurt themselves or hurt somebody else. Many times we can help get them into other services, but occasionally they need some type of um, more a deeper treatment, um, and again, that's part of what we what we do. Another area that we are doing a lot of work in has to do with mental health, mental health first aid, and that's related to the crisis. As we all are aware, um, school shootings all across the nation are really impacting our our communities. Um, Governor Abbott just recently released the School Safety Action Plan to help schools um, provide a safe place for our children. And so one of the key components of that is called mental health first aid. And mental health first aid is simply training that we provide to, um, it can be to a variety of audiences, but we really target school audiences, school personnel, and universities to help train them in understanding early identification of mental illness um, and signs of maybe um, something that's going on that might need a, a more in-depth look. And so Community Health Corps has certified trainers that are able to help provide the training and we partner with schools and so again another area or one of the areas that we help provide services and supports is to help training school personnel both at the university level and public school level in um, I guess observing and watching for emerging needs with their students. Let me just finish by talking a little bit about um, let me finish by sharing a little bit about the program that I've been most directly involved with over the last 10 years, and it has to do with the East Texas Aging and Disability Resource Center. ADRCs are it's a national movement, and they are all across um, the United States, and, and they're there to help people to connect, um, to help locate services. I don't know if you've experienced this, but I certainly have, where I call a, a particular um, entity, and ask them a question, I'm looking for something, and they said, no, we don't do that anymore, but I think maybe so-and-so does it. And so then I call the so-and-so, and the so-and-so says, no, but you might try it. And at some point, you can get really tired of, of you know, trying to find the information that you think would really be helpful. And so out of that need, Aging and Disability Resource Centers came about as a place to help um, anybody to call and if it has to do with um, a person with um, intellectual disabilities or developmental disabilities, physical disabilities, if it has to do with older adults, um, our aging population, which is great now through um, medicine, that they can help connect them to long-term services and supports. Um, and so it's a great starting place and eliminate some of the guessing. And a really easy way to contact any ADRC is on this card, which also should be at your table, which is 855-937-2372. And if you dial that number, it will take you to um, a, uh, like a call center where it asks you a, a key question, you answer that, and it'll actually ring, for instance, if you put in a zip code that's in our, um, in Upshur County, it will actually ring on the desk in Longview where that office is located. And the great thing about this 855 number is let's say that you don't have a need but you have a family member has a need and they're over in West Texas, you can call the same number 
they put in their zip code and it'll ring on the ADRC desk at that location. So again, it's uh, part of the state system to try to help better connect <coughs> persons um, to long-term services and supports. So as I was saying earlier, one of my joys is working with the ADRC and we've had a special project that we recently are, are, have been in for four years and it's working with communities, it's working with um, organizations, it's working with people sharing their gifts and um, I want to share just a short video that we have and then my remarks will be over. But um, again, it's just really great and the great thing is it's all about people sharing their gifts to help promote community inclusion. So please watch. After it, bring it back up. <clears throat> Y'all tell me if it gets too loud. Many people with disabilities experience differently. They may not have a sense of presence in the community and may not have access to activities they prefer or desire. Often, they never experience choice. to the ability to go out in the community to work. The idea that someone with an intellectual disability can work just like you or me. My sister was, was working for Senator Judith Zedrani. Um, she was working on this bill and with my sister. And she really likes this bill. And she wanted to, get to, 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 to make a law and get it passed. And it's called the Respectful Language Bill. I went and testified for a couple of times down there, a lot. And um, we finally got the, uh, the, uh, the law passed. We went through both sides, the, the Senate and House. And what does that do is um, it, it replaces um, the R word and all regulations and 
encyclopedias and stuff like that. I saw a need for help with uh, their meals because the money that they get for their meals sometimes is maybe, could be $100. And so $100, if you don't know how to cook, doesn't go a whole month for one person to eat on. So um, I started this class because I realized how many people out there in the community that are um, hungry for the last week of the month or the last week and a half of the month. And so I wanted to start this, this cooking class that I started. And, um, and th this program gave me uh, a grant for that. But I found out that there were people out there that, that needed this skill. Um, I was like, okay, I can do something. How do we create a community that can include people with disabilities? We do this through the people that are inspired to make a difference. They encourage volunteers to realize their gifts and to share them with others. They are trying to function in society, and you need to be able to interact with them. And it makes them feel important. Smile at them. Just acknowledge that they are there so that they don't feel like they're just walking through this world without anybody looking at them. They deserve to be spoken to, loved on, um, just acknowledge that they are here with us. Let them be responsible for something um, because these are the things that are going to help them to grow into someone with confidence. Do you have one hour a week? Just one hour a week. Think about it. In the span of our, our day, I'm asking for one hour a week. And you said for what? A book club. There's one, it's called The Geek. Club. They read the Naughty Chronicles. So I had the opportunity to go see in on their book club for one hour. I was blown away. Invite them into your organization or whatever I do. If you start an organization, invite them into the organization. Give them responsibilities. Give them a part to your organization and see what happens because they're going to surprise you. There are times that we'll be running through this, that we'll be walking through the store, and he gets really excited, and his arms stop clapping, and he's going, whoa, 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 whoa. A lot of people turn their head and they look. And it used to really offend me. I used to make him stop. Now when he runs to the store like that, sometimes me and my husband will copy him and run with him. And if people are going to stare, let them stare, because I want him to feel like he belongs. I've learned not to be afraid of individuals with disabilities or anyone that's different than I am. And that everyone has the right to be able to have access, to be able to be out in the community, to be able to work, to be able to have a family. I would hope that there would be a lot more acceptance. There would be a lot more avenues for our kids. In my lifetime, you know, I, I, I would like to see uh, more people getting uh, getting hired in, in, in jobs. I want to see people be, being accepted and, and respected to, uh, you know, towards other people. But remember, they're no different than me or you. They want the same things in a life. In every community, we see people that are inspired to make a difference by sharing their passion to help. They encourage volunteers to realize their gifts and talents and to become a part of a community of inclusion, champions of inclusion. You can be a champion of inclusion. Anyway, that's our recent video that we've done, and it's also located on the East Texas ADRC website, which is etxadrc.org, which is, again, this is a program of Community Health Corps. Um, and I really would challenge your organization as well, just think of opportunities, I, I'm sure y'all are very civic-minded, I know y'all are engaged in, in activities, but involving persons with disabilities to be a part of the organization would be great. Um, let me just say I would be remiss to, to not add that Community Health Corps is operated by a board of trustees and the, and the board member who represents Upshur County is Tom Stamper 
And so if you know Mr. Stamper um, and you come across him, please say thank you for his service on the Community Health Corps Board. Anyway, thank you very much. I will be here and Susan will be here. And if y'all have any questions afterwards, I know it's about time for y'all to dismiss. We've still got a couple of minutes. Okay. Questions? Whatever y'all would like to do. I'm sensitive to your time. You want to have a question? I've got one. Mm -hmm. this, this number. Yes, sir. Five, five, statewide or nationwide? Statewide. statewide. So it's, okay. it's exclusively, great question, exclusively for the state uh -huh. of Texas. Um, doesn't, unfortunately, doesn't work in Louisiana or other places. I yes, sir. Do we have uh, a staffed uh, office here in Gilmer that someone's here all the time? We have the clinic, the Madison Clinic, which is, or the clinic that's on Madison Street. And I'll be honest, I couldn't tell you if it's open five days a week or if it's open just partial days of the week. But we do have a clinic that's here um, to help provide outpatient um, services. And a lot of our services that we provide are virtual, which I guess is a word where people are going out into the community. And so there is somebody in Upshur County every day of the week from Community Health Corps, case management, crisis screeners, et cetera, providing services um, out. But it, we do have that one physical location where people can come for clinic services. The four, um primarily do Medicare, Medicaid, or? We take all types, um, and again, it depends upon what, you know, I mentioned many different, um, I guess, people groups, as I call them, that we provide services to, um, and each funding source has its own rules and regulations, uh, and so it, it, we do take Medicaid, um, we do take, in some cases, Medi uh, Medicare, we also have private pay, um, we in some cases, some services are free, and in other cases, services you pay on a sliding scale. If you have questions about services, there is also an intake number. It's 1-800-4-INTAKE, which is also at the very, uh, just below the map. And a person can call that number and can find out um, if they have information or what they might qualify for if there's a, um, a cost. And again, some services that we offer are uh, do not have a, a fee. Other services, there is like a, a, a sliding fee. Anything else? Okay. Yeah. Very good program. We appreciate that.